All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always um, watch our recordings at your convenience, and at the end of today's show, I'll show you where those recordings are. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in um, any of our topics. Uh, for those of you not from the Nebraska Library Commission, uh, Encompass Law, or not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. We provide services to all types of libraries across the state. So you will find um, shows, topics on our shows that are also from all for, uh, for all types of libraries, public, academic, uh, K-12, schools, universities, archives, corrections, uh, it pretty much runs the gamut. Anything and everything is out there. So you should be able to find something. Um, we bring in guest speakers on the show sometimes from all across the state or state and across the country, but we also bring in have some of our Nebraska Library Commission staff also uh, do presentations for us. And today, because it is the last Wednesday of the month, it is our Pretty Sweet Tech session, um, a monthly session where Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on and talks to us about techie related things. And today, as you can see, she's gonna talk about screen recorder, making tutorials online. And I'm just gonna uh, hand over to her to go ahead and take it away, Amanda. I just had kind of a lesson in empathy here because <laughs> I now know what it feels like to be deaf, to see someone's oh. mouth moving and know you're supposed to be doing something pretty soon, <laughs> but not have that cue. <laughs> For those of you coming in later, you're watching this on a recording later, um, for some reason, Amanda has no audio. She can't hear me, but we've got chat um, behind the scenes. We are communicating. It's all good, and she's going to go ahead and take it away. Yeah. All right, so can you see my screen on there? Cool. All right, so now in the chat, if you could mention what did you want to get out of this? So what kind of videos are you trying to make with a screen tutorial? And what are you trying to accomplish here? Um, and I'm going to pop in here so you can get kind of a preview of what I'm going to be talking about, just in case you are completely new to doing screen recordings. So what I had planned to talk about was different screen recording options, including doing direct screen recordings from software, doing screen recordings from your webcam, and kind of the specifics of how to use recording with a software called Flashback Express. About, it's okay, it's okay. It's basically a really awesome screen recorder, and it just happens to be free. So then I had planned to dive into teleprompters and scripts and how you can set up your computer system so that you can be reading a script or a teleprompter without very obviously looking at a script or a teleprompter. And these scripts are really great to use either if you are completely new to videos or if you want to be able to stay on track when you are recording. And I'll give you some different options that you can use to get that started on your own. And then we can talk about webcam placement and settings. And fun fact, whenever I actually record myself in a webcam, I you will never actually see what's really behind me because mm -hmm. what is behind me is not really the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world. It's basically just white brick and white wall. So I actually record all of my webcam using Zoom. And I use the virtual background in Zoom, so you can never actually see anything. And I use the auto light adjustment in Zoom, so I don't have to mess around with different lighting settings in, and configurations in my own room. And then I'll talk about how to put it all together in very basic editing in Canva. 
And at any time, you can also put into the chat something that you want to do specifically. I'll try to feature that as I'm going through that stage in the presentation. So that's why I always ask as early as I possibly can what you plan to do, what you're trying to accomplish, and what kind of videos you are trying to make. Because I want you to get something out of this. And by telling me, I can help you out. All right, so let's dive in. And again, I won't actually be able to hear Krista interrupt me to let me know that there is a question. So I am going to keep the chat open on the side. So I might have an inkling. And after this, I'm going to figure out why in the world my microphone and speakers are doing that. But for now, you at least you can hear me. Okay, so the first thing I wanna point out is I set up these slides in this order for a reason. Did you feel your eyes adjust when you went from this light color to a dark and back to a light? Mm -hmm. So when you are setting up a video, keep this lighting and color idea in mind because you don't wanna shock the audience's eyes when you are composing new images and trying to go from frame to frame. If you are using light colors, use an all light palette. If you're using dark colors, use an RL dark palette, because otherwise your eyes are going to be constantly readjusting. So that is tip number one when making any kind of video or graphic composition. So first I'm going to show you how your different screen recording options. The most common ones that I use to make video tutorials are the direct screen record. I use that to make software tutorials. I've used it to do demonstrations and I've used it for quite a few different things. And the second one is if you want to get something really quick information out there that you don't wanna spend a lot of time and money putting together, just get a Google Slides or PowerPoint presentation put it into full screen recording and record yourself with the narration in the background. There are paid software options that will do this for you. I just use Flashback Express because it is indeed free. And if you are doing little snippets of software recording, little snippets of webcam recording, you can alternate those back and forth and put them all together using your editor. In this case, the editor is going to be Canva there are more complex ones and there are easier ones, but this is just kind of a good place for beginners to start and it happens to be free. And then I'll go over different webcam settings. And just as a pro tip, um, when you're doing software recordings, I don't tend to care if there's a webcam thumbnail in the bottom right hand corner. I care about what the software looks like. I don't care about what your tiny face looks like in the corner. And I also, it also takes more production time to be able to get your webcam to look perfect. And for a tiny little webcam thumbnail that people don't pay a lot of attention to. Um, I watched a lot of um, coding tutorial, software tutorials. Most of the YouTube comments always say, I love your tutorials, Traversy Media, but I don't, I keep getting distracted by your facial features in the bottom right hand corner, or you always have to keep readjusting your thumbnail. So just take it out. And if you are doing a story hour, or if you want to feature a book or a document, you can use a document camera. So the difference between a regular camera, webcam, and a document camera is that the regular camera just looks like this with the little snap a picture, you're good, you're done. The webcam usually gets mounted on the top of a monitor or you can have like a little tripod. And that way you can take the images directly in front of you. A document camera faces directly downward. And you can use that to read out story hour images and then have people be able to see a clear, crisp image of that document while you're doing it or you can use this for worksheets. So if you are doing a workshop or a demonstration, you can have a document camera set up on one USB connection, and you can have your screen recording in the background so that instead of a thumbnail of your face, you can fill up half the screen with a demonstration of a worksheet or a demonstration of some activity that you want them to complete that has to be done hands-on. 
So they may, they'll be able to see the digital sign on the left-hand side and the actual worksheet that goes along with this so they can start associating those two together. And they'll know I have this physical worksheet in my hand. It goes together with this. All right, so now this is the main thing that you need to do pretty much all of this. So this is Flashback Express. This is the screen recorder. I'm going to go down to this download free version to give you a feel for what this is going to look like. So there are there is a pro version of this. The main difference between the pro version and the pay and the free version is that the pro version has editing options included in with it. So if you do happen to do a lot of editing and you don't want to go bounce between separate different systems, you actually might want to grab the pro version. But I only stuck with this Flashback Express, the free version, because I really like free things. So I'm going to open up. It is by Blueberry Software. So after you download it, when you get the Git Express free, it's going to land here. We'll open up Blueberry Software. It comes with a player and a recorder. You open up the recorder first, change your settings, and then it will automatically shift over to the player. The player is where you're going to, you can trim your completed file so you can clip out the beginning of it when you might be getting stuff ready. And then you can clip out the end of it that is usually just dead air. And then you can go into the player to export the file as an MP4, AVI, or WMB. I usually use MP4 just because it works with most things. YouTube loves it. So flashback recorder. And can you see the settings on my screen? Mm -hmm. And I just realized that I can't hear Krista. I see the thumbs up. OK. <laughs> All right. So on this top part, you're going to see this is going to be just like every other software system that you've ever been in. So just like Zoom, just like go to meeting, it's going to ask you to set your microphone and then set your speakers on here. And we are going to the real tech. And so this option is if you want to add that little thumbnail webcam in the bottom right hand corner. I don't usually do that. So I uncheck it and then that webcam won't be picked up when you do the recording. You can also go into these main settings section. And the major things that I change in here are where the Flashback Express 5, the little the settings show up so that it will say stop video, pause video, play video. And I put that into the icon tray because if you put, if you put it into a floating toolbar, your recording is going to have a little rectangle that has a play, stop, pause on it which doesn't always look great. So the icon tray will actually put it into this bottom right hand corner. You'll open up the show hidden icons and it will show up in here. All right, so I'm going to go into webcam, which is the next thing that you'll probably change the most often. If you do use a webcam, you can use Flashback Express to show only your webcam. But if you do that, make sure that you the webcam format is on the pixels that is used on your screen. If you don't, if you choose the default, which is the 240 by 480, it will automatically change the display settings on your monitor so that the recording looks good. But when you close out Flashback Express, you'll need to change back over the, the display settings on your monitor because it will look very weird. And the last thing I'll go over right now is the desktop setting. So, you know, in some, in some tutorials, you have to go shift over to the desktop and say, open up this file. You don't necessarily want people to, to be able to see everything and anything that is on your wallpaper or on your, like all of your icons. 
And this is especially true for people who like to have their kids as their wallpaper. And there are privacy settings in some places that say don't put images of your kids online for everyone to see, especially when they are associated with you. And they tell them that they're associated with you, but they, you don't want people watching that to be able to say, this is my kid. So that is why you'd want to hide your desktop icons and desktop wallpaper. And it's awesome that Flashback Express will do that. And then you can also change the resolution to a 1280 by 720 so that it will look good when you are recording it. And I always recommend to use the highest pixel size possible because you can shrink things down, but you can't make them bigger. When you try to make them bigger, it'll start to pixelate and look blurry and horrible. Yep. So just use the highest setting possible and then you should be good to go. And then you can, so my monitor actually uses, and I'll double check this, I'm going to go into my computer settings, my system, and go into my display. And your display will always say, the recommended setting is the display resolution of 1920 by 1080. That is the resolution used by, by my specific monitor. And there are different monitors that will have a higher resolution and lower. I just use the resolution that is set on my computer because otherwise it's going to look very odd when you're editing. So 1920, 1080, remember that. And now we go into 1920, 1080 in video mode, and OK. So now we will record. And what we are recording, do you remember that I said about the, the easiest way that you can do any tutorial is just by doing a slideshow in Google Docs? So mm -hmm. I'm going to open up my slideshow in Google Docs. This is from when I did a LEGO Mindstorm EV3 training, and this was the these are the different robots you can build. Doesn't matter what this video actually is, I'm just gonna show you the technique. You'll see that I have the slide put together here, just a simple quick slide, and then I put together my script down at the bottom. I'm going to go into this present in the upper right-hand corner. Make sure that you are in presenter view so that you can see your audience notes. So now these notes, I have a dual screen monitor. So I slide these notes to the other side. If you don't have a dual screen monitor, you can just print them off. <clears throat> and if you do have them printed off, I recommend recording one little printed section. And then before you switch to a new page, stop the recording and then start a new one. Because otherwise you're going to have some extra editing to do because it takes time to flip that page and you will might, you will probably hear page rustling. All right, so I'm going to go back in here. We'll go to record. It'll ask you to click the window that you want to record. You'll click it, <clears throat> hit the record. It'll give you a three, two, one. Nice. And I'm going to close this out and we're going to put this into full screen mode. We'll go back to the first slide and my script is changing as automatically when I shift this back over and I'll just do a quick recording. I'm going to do a clap so I know where to keep it. That audio spike is going to let me know where to start the editing and trim my video. I'll do it again. Welcome to the next video in the Library Innovation Studios Leica Mindstorm EV3 training series. This series is designed to help library staff get comfortable with leading a library a Leica Mindstorm EV3 activity in the library. There are a few steps to learning the basics and getting started with Leica Mindstorm. First, you need to know how to build a robot. Then you can program the robot to move and interact with the world. When you're comfortable with the basics of building and programming, you can start facilitati facilitating activities in the library. It's not too bad once you get the hang of it. In this video, we'll cover how to access build instructions online. The robot on the screen is the tracker robot. 
And this is the robot model we'll use for the rest of the LEGO Mindstorm, <coughs> LEGO Mindstorm training series. The most common methods used to build the robot are the downloadable build options on LEGO's website or to run through the different missions using LEGO's Home Edition software. Now I'm going to close out of here. I didn't finish the whole video. I've already recorded this previously. So we're just going to use what I did well instead of what I coughed through. But you can kind of get the idea of how that would be recorded. Now we want to close out of this full screen. We're going to scroll down, get into our hidden icon tray. You'll look for this little camera icon with the recording. You'll click it open and hit stop. There's also shortcut keys to be able to start, stop, and play a recording. So you can either memorize those or just know to look for it in the tray. It is still recording me as I do this. So we're going to save it. And I'm going to put it into downloads as a test because I'm going to delete this later because I screwed it up. And we'll go into test for training and save. So now it's every time you stop a recording, it's going to reopen Flashback Express again, and it'll ask you if you want to record using those same or similar settings. In which case, right now, we don't want to do that. I'll just show you where to go to. I'm going to open up my downloads where I save this, and then I'll open it up. And it's going to open up that player. So this is what the player looks like. Now I'm going to close this out. And so I'm this is that this introduction screen. where I was starting to put things into full screen. What I'm going to do is instead of listening to this whole mess again, I'm going to scroll forward until you hear that until you see that spike in audio where I clapped. And I clapped twice, I remember. So now you play it back. And I'll just do a quick recording. I'm going to do a clap so I know where to keep it. So now you know what that clap audio looks like. Keep it. And that's where that spiky looking audio looks like instead of the smooth vocal audio. So that's where you can tell the difference. And you would want to keep about a five second trim. Five seconds would be about five frames. One, two, three, four, five. We'll do an extra for good luck. Now I'm going to look at this frame. The frame number is marked down below. Well, this is 250. So we're just going to jot down 250 on the board. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. Now I'm going to scroll clear down to the end here. Normally you would listen back to this, make sure that it actually all sounds the way that you want it to. But in this case, it's just a demonstration. And let's just assume that you listen back and this is the part where you want to keep it. So we're just going to go to frame number 1100. So I'm going to write down 1100 on my paper. And then I'm going to go into file and export. So the export, I always do the MP4 because most programs that I use are compatible with it. You might choose a different format if you happen to need that one. <clears throat> so we're going to go into OK. Now it's going to ask you, you can either export the entire movie, which we don't want to do. We're going to go into selected frames, go to 250 and 1100. <clears throat> And then I'm going to keep it at the highest pixel possible. So it's at a 100 width and a 100 height. And we're going, I'll show you what the frame quality looks like. We're going to go into the full frame rate so that the transition looks smooth as you're going through the frames in the video. And the video, the audio quality in the background is going to always be set to the highest 
because as you sift this through and filter this through different video editors, that audio and sound quality is going to get less and less and less. Mm. So the higher the sound and video quality you have in the beginning, the better it's going to sound at the end. So we'll go to export <clears throat> and we'll keep it in the downloads here. Test for training, we'll go to save. And it will always take just a little bit just to be able to rend this, render this video and be completed. So just know that when this little bar thing gets done, you're good. But for now, I'm going to go into my documents and I'll go into Lego Mindstorm. No, I don't want to view it. Lego Mindstorm build a robot. These are the videos that I already recorded for Lego Mindstorm. And so I did just see a little blinking comment in the in the corner of my eye. Someone would like me to go over how to do the transcript and presenter mode again, and I will do that shortly. Okay, so these are the videos and the images that I've already put together for a video. And you can see that each one of these, the title appears twice. So this is the proprietary um, file that comes with Flashback Recorder. This is the FBR file. And then this is the MP4 file that I exported. So for each one of these, there's going to be two that I've already completed. So I've already gone through the initial recording, gone through the player, and I've done this exporting just like we just did. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to pull this, these images into Canva and string them together into a full video. And before I'll do that, I'll just do the quick presenter mode again. So this is Google Slides. And in the upper right hand corner, once you've completed putting the slideshow together and the notes, you'll go into present. Instead of just clicking present, click on the downward arrow on the right hand side and go into presenter view. Presenter view will pop up these notes and any Q and A's that you may have put into the slides. And then all I do is I just slide it over into my second monitor so you can't see it to be recorded on this display screen. All right, so I'm going to close this presentation because we don't need it anymore. And I'll close this download screen, but I'll keep this open. So now I'm going to open up Canva. So Canva is just canva.com. And I've already just recently logged in, so Canva did automatically log me back in as soon as I went to the website. Otherwise, it will ask you to, sign, to create a new account, and then it'll ask you to log in. Then it will bring you to this main home screen. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go into Create a Design in the upper right-hand corner. I do have videos that will give you a better overview of what Canva is and how it works. But just for the sake of time, I won't give you everything there is to know about Canva right now. Just know that you can make different flyers, infographics, and brochures for your library, and that already comes with pre-made templates. So we'll go to Create a Design, scroll down to Video. It defaults to 1920 by 1080 pixels, which incidentally is the same pixel size as my monitor. And there's a reason for that. So you'll always see in this upper, this top section, the title of your current project and the pixel size of your current project. And that's why you want to be able to choose a video layout that's the same pixel size as what you made your initial video. Otherwise, you're going to get a weird distortion effect that doesn't always turn out so great. So we have our 1080p to 1080p matching. And again, Canva does have templates over here that are already pre-made that you can just adjust with your own videos or to build your own presentations. 
So if you don't want to mess with your own design, then use those. They're pretty good. But for now, we are just going to use a blank slide. So on this bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see different pages. So when you hover over all this little plus sign down at the bottom, it's going to ask you to add a page, add a page. So in this first one, we want to have, I'm going to open up my documents again. We'll go back into like a Mindstorm folder. I have two document folders in here because I network two of my computers together. So that was the documents from my, I make book earrings and stuff. So cool. And I'm going to open up my Lego Mindstorm Build a Robot video. So we want to load all of these images and videos into Canva. I'm going to drag this into my second monitor, but know that it's still open in there. I'll go into my uploads and I'm going to upload media. So I'll click upload, go to my device. I'm going to reopen the documents. This time it's the correct document folder, not from my other computer. And I'll go into Lego Build a Robot. And I and only the files that are compatible with um, Canva are going to show up here. So all of those proprietary FBR files, they don't show up. So let's see if we can just do them all in one. Let's highlight, select all of them, and go to open. So now the image is going to pop in here. And what I'm hoping is going to happen is we'll open up the video section and the Lego Mindstorms show ups up here. And it looks like these are doing what we want them to do. So now the tricky part is that we need to match up which video is what and in what order. So what I usually do is I keep, that's why I kept this open here. So what I'm doing is I'm matching up the thumbnail image to what shows up over here. So I know that introduction comes first and this introduction has the thumbnail of build a robot. So that's this one. So this I'm going to drag and drop. We'll click it. Welcome to the next video in the line. And it will automatically play every time you drag it over into the right section. But I just pause it so I don't have to listen to myself while I'm doing this. Now I'm going to resize it so that it's the correct sizing. And I'm going to overshoot here just to get it to fit the right space. And I'm going to reposition it so that top toolbar doesn't show up. And all we have is the slideshow. So now anything that shows up outside of our workspace is gone. So if you accidentally recorded a toolbar or the top half navigation section of your web browser, don't worry about it too much because you can get it gone when you do the editing. All right, so now we're going to drag this section over here to the left because we need to put our introduction slide over here. So we'll go into this images, go into the Lego Mindstorm, and I'm going to resize this title slide so that it fits this front section. So now we are going to have this title slide and then it'll transition over into your actual video. So now you might wanna set how long this title slide actually shows up. By default, it's going to display in our video for five seconds long before it transitions over into the actual video. If you wanna change that, you can do instead of five seconds, we can make it 2.5, hit done. So that way this little brief intro slide doesn't take up too much time. 
And you may not even need an intro slide because this is the exact same slide. The only reason that I did this in here is to show you that it's possible. So now we need to pull in the rest of these videos. And I'll go back into videos and we're going to keep matching up our thumbnails. So we have our introduction that came first. And then you want people to be able to download the desktop software. And so we're going to match up this thumbnail image. So we have a little yellow bar across and then the robot images. That's this one. We're going to keep open this new page. Click on it. It'll pop in. And resize. If you don't already have the Lego mic. And there I am. And in this case, I actually do want that full toolbar to show up, so I don't want to resize too bad. And I'm going to stretch it out there. I don't really care too much about the right hand side. That'll work. Then we'll go into the add a page and we're going to keep pulling these in. So we got the download, we did the introduction. Now we need the website overview and the software build overview. The only reason I know which order these go in is because I put together a storyboard and script that tells me which order this goes in. So I recorded it in a specific order and now I just know it because I had written it down and planned it previously. So we'll go into the website overview. This is the this icon here. So we'll click it. The easiest way to get to let pause this so you don't have to hear me talking about it. And resize it. And again, I don't really care too much about the right side because I don't need any of that side. But I could clip it in. And last one is going to be, uh, these are from an old Canva video that I did. So these we don't actually need in this project. The last one is the software build which is this one. So I have the Lego Mindstorm. And pause me. And when I recorded these, I must have recorded them in a slightly too large of a, <laughs> a video format. And the, so the reason these aren't actually matching up perfectly is because when I chose the record setting in Flashback Express, I actually edited these, I edited these originally in a different player that didn't have the same pixel size. Mm -hmm. So if you do choose the right pixel size, you won't have that overhang. Or you can also change your palette size to fit the right size. I see another blinking in the chat, so let me click that open. And there's a question that says, does it work pretty much the same way when using PowerPoint? And yep, it does. If you add in notes into PowerPoint and do the presenter view, same thing. Cool. All right, so now these are all strung together and you can listen through all of them, but this would be a very long video if we actually did that. So you can see in this upper right-hand corner that this is a 12 minute and 57 second long video. And you can hit this download here so it's going to ask if you want to download all five pages of your video, which you do. It's going to ask you about the file format that you want to use. And you want to, I usually keep it as an MP4 just because it works with most things. And you can do download. And it usually takes a minute to download a video that's this long. It will render that file and push it all together. And it usually puts it into your download folder once it's completed. So this is kind of the most basic video editing that you can do with Canva just to string together some pre-made, pre-recorded software demonstrations. And that's all this robot build option was, was a software demonstration. 
it was a direct screen record, just exactly like we did with the um, Google slide presentation. But instead of clicking on the Google slide window, it was just a Lego Mindstorm software window. And that's pretty much the only difference. And this, as you can see, it's going to take a little bit. So while this is downloading, I'm going to show you a few other things that you can do with Canva if you want to make a little bit more complex pages on here. So let's click open this one. And let's say that you did actually want to, let's say that you recorded this, you got it to, you got the software part of it to look exactly the way that you wanted it to. But now let's say that you did want to add in another little webcam video down at the bottom after the recording had already been done. You can do that. So I'm just going to grab one of these Canva videos and just, be, just for a demonstration, it doesn't matter what kind of video it is, I'm just going to show you the mechanics of how it's done. So just assume that I loaded in a video of me and webcam. So I'm going to click this open my name's Amanda Sweet. The deposit. Now I'm going to resize it. And now you have a picture in picture. So you can drag this anywhere that you want it to go. And this is the quickest way to do a well, it's picture in picture. And if you remember before, I talked about the using the document camera. If you had wanted to have the look and feel of having a software demonstration on the left hand side and you wanted to have an image of the actual worksheet or document that you want people to be able to work on on the right hand side you can do that so you can lower the pixel size of the initial recording that you do so instead of the 1080p you would do about a about a 460 or a 680 pixel so that you can make it smaller and not have it look too terribly weird. Or you can keep this 1080p and I'm going to shift it over. Oh, come on now. Oh, I bet it's, it's probably because it's still rendering. So it's just working on too many things at one time. So what I'm trying to do is actually click and move this over, but because this is also rendering at the same time, it doesn't seem to be loving that I'm working on the same file. So I'm going to open up a different one and I'll show you how to do it there. So I will open up a new one. We'll create a new design, go into video, And then I'm going to pull in one of the sample videos that we have that is provided by Canva itself. So Canva also offers a whole bunch of free open source videos that you can use in any one of your projects. So I'm just going to grab this one just for demonstration purposes. And again, I'm going to show you how to make your software demonstration on the left hand side and a document demonstration on the right hand side. And all it is, is shifting it, resizing it, and then you put in, you would upload your document video and put it on the right. Welcome side. to the next video. And we'll pause me because no one needs to hear that right now. And put it over here. So now you have this messy little bottom section. So what I usually recommend is that if you do one of these side by side, plan it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So if you plan it ahead of time, instead of recording your video in the widescreen, you can record it in portrait, just like you would record it in like on a cell phone or a mobile device. Sure then you're, you're going to be able to resize and position those and have it cover up a more natural part of the screen if you record in that portrait instead of in widescreen. 
And that's why I always recommend a storyboard and script so you know how you, you have an idea of how you want to edit and create your video before you actually take the footage. Because if you know ahead of time that you want to edit it side by side, shoot it side by side. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with this weirdly placed mm. video sizing that has this little clear section on the bottom. But fear not, if you've already recorded it, you don't want to record it again, you can fix it. So you just move these down here, and then you'll add some text, and just let people know what you're working on here. So you'll add a heading and start filling up some of this white space. Fake it afterwards, make it look like you meant to do it. Move this up here. And then you will center it up at the top. Then Canva has convenient little centering lines on all of their sites, on all of their pages. So I just use that to center it. And you see this little box that shows up here? So this is the, it's the recommended box where you're going to place the bulk of your images so that people can see it more easily on different size screens because on different display settings and different screens, sometimes images outside of that box will get clipped off. So that is why they recommend that things fit more or less inside there. And then you can add in some elements and stickers just to make it look more natural looking, or you can add in a subheading. Um, and move this up here. So now it looks like you did it on purpose. <laughs> and you can also change out your background. So, and I'm just gonna choose a random one here, but you would probably use something, you can either use um, general branding colors that fits with your library or organization, or you can use a pattern or a texture that fits with the style of video that you're working with, or just leave it blank. <laughs> and I will open up the chat button because I see it blinking at me again. And where is the storyboard feature to plan out our video before we record on flashback? So the storyboard is actually something that you would do separately before this. So let me open up here. I'm going to open up my video guide, video production guide. So you want the scripting and storyboarding. So these are resources to make an actual storyboard. Um, this will, these are videos that will walk you through step by step how to do it, put it together. If you want a picture of what it looks like, let me open mine. Here. So here is an example. Um, so this is not actually a storyboard from a video that I made. This is a storyboard that I recreated from the Simply Safe Social Distancing Sweater video. So mm -hmm. basically you would set the scene in the left-hand side. You would say that in the beginning of it, there might be holiday figurines. These are the different props that you're going to lay out and where you're going to put them. These are different notes for how you're going to shoot the video. You're going to focus on the little figurine house, which is the main image, and then you're going to blur the workshop background so you can either add text or just keep focus on that, on that house. And you can also put in notes for about how long you want to shoot that. And you'll usually shoot the shot for a little bit longer than you will actually need the actual footage because one, you want some sections to choose from so that you can trim it out and clip out what you actually need. And it's easier to have more than you need to work with than less and try to create more after you're done. 
this will give you an idea of you can make notes about the specific materials you need to gather and you can make notes about the editing tools and you can also put in a an actual script on the right hand side if you want to see my lego mindstorm one that i used before i made that a while ago so i might have to scroll for a little bit here uh, da, 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 da. let's search for it Now here's hoping that I actually kept it. Oh, here. Okay, so this was actually shot as a series. So to make the video series, this was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I put eight videos in that series. And I made notes for editing, and this is how I know the order of when things were actually supposed to be edited and put together. These are the file names that I used to so that I know what goes where and any specific editing notes that I needed to put in. And so instead of putting all of my video script together in one thing, mm -hmm. I sometimes link over to the actual script page or slideshow because my spoken script showed up in the notes in Google Slides. So I didn't see the point in putting it in both places because it would take up too much space. So this was just like another quick way that I could let myself know order of the files and what to look for where. And is this guide available to download? So do you mean the video production? And if you do mean the video production, I'll just put a link to it in the chat. Share mm. and copy link. So this is to the video production guide in the chat, if this was the one you're looking for. And did anyone want that example of the Lego Mindstorm format that I had used? And if you do, then it's just a Google Doc and I can put a link to that too. Actually, mm -hmm. I may as well. Okay, I'm getting some yeses. So let me grab the Lego Mindstorm EV3. I'll share it. Copy link. And Lego Mindstorm sample storyboard. And there we go. All right, so now let me go back in here. And this is the initial slideshow that I started out with, just to tell you basically what I was going to cover and somewhat in what order. So I'm going to go back into what I'm going to cover. So we did the screen recording option. I did the recording with Flashback Express. Then we rendered that into a completed MP4 video format. And then we loaded all of these into Canva and did some basic video editing. So it is 11 o'clock. So the last thing I'm going to show is a I'll show two quick things, the teleprompter and script. So the teleprompter, there are online teleprompters here. So the Q prompter is the one that I've used before. If you have a script that you had put together and you don't want to use the notes in a slideshow because maybe you're not using a slideshow, then you can copy and paste your entire script right here and I'm just going to do a quick demo. It doesn't actually have to matter if the text makes sense. It's just demonstration. Mm -hmm. So we'll copy it, put it into the teleprompter. And I'm going to do the prompter width is wide, font size is big. We'll do a black text with a white background and normal. Start prompter. So now this 
it will automatically, and you can change this to a smaller font size if, if this is just giant, but they only made this this size because usually you're viewing a teleprompter from a distance. Mm. So you might actually need this just to be able to see it. And when you hit the space bar, nice. it'll start automatically put like pulling that text up so you can start reading it. If you are kind of slower in reading because the text is so giant, then you can also slow down the speed of it or pause it and start it again just by hitting that space bar. So that is a good teleprompter to use. And there are also other ones that are available so you can play around with them and just see which one you like. And then the other thing that I'll go over is the webcam placement and settings. And again, I don't usually use the webcam recording that just does my natural recording. And it's because it's actually for a couple different reasons. One, it's because I don't always have the lighting equipment on hand to be able to get perfect lighting so that I actually look decent on camera. And two, I don't always have the perfect background as I mentioned before. My background right now is kind of blah. I don't worry about it too very much because I go into Zoom and I use the Zoom settings to add in a virtual background so you can't see anything behind me. And I load in my own just kind of plain minimal background and I do the minimal background that is usually a solid color because that way I can also add text in Canva like we did before. And that will be able to, it'll be, able, it'll be easier to see any text or headings or extra images that you add in Canva if you use a blank and spare minimal head, a back, virtual background. And I also like using Zoom to do all of my webcam recordings because it also has an automatic touch-up feature so that it reduces redness and blemishes. So I have really ridiculously smooth skin in all of my videos. And it's <laughs> mostly because technology. Um, there's a little <laughs> slider bar that will get rid of all the redness and marks on any and anything that shows up on my face. And there's also a, oh, let's see here. I'm just going to open up a note on the side here. Okay, so you want to be able to touch up just enough so, so that you still look human, but that you look so you are decent looking on camera. And for webcam placement, I always put the camera slightly higher up. Um, in this particular case, the webcam is actually too high. Um, and that's because the Logitech webcam that I use is mounted on top of a monitor. The new monitor that I got is two inches taller than my old monitor. So it actually is considerably higher than where it should be right now. It should actually be about two to three inches lower so that it's more straight on, but that it's still at a downward angle when you are placing your webcam. And that is mostly because people's faces tend to look better when the camera angle is coming from above rather than below or even straight on. And oh, yes. I'm also not the hugest fan of my own chin. So when it's coming in, the angle is coming in from the top, you don't have to worry about it too much. And Zoom also has a function that will account for low light. So instead of me doing perfect lighting, I check a box and it automatically changes the contrast and makes it look brighter in the room than it actually is. So I didn't invest a ton of time, money, and energy into getting all the expensive lighting equipment. I just press a button on Zoom. And I would demonstrate that for you right now, but there's an unfortunate thing that if you are using a webcam in one open program, Zoom will not let you use the camera in Zoom as well. You have to close the camera in one to open it in the other. Yeah, don't do that right now. So <laughs> there is that. But there are tutorials online that'll show you how to do it. Yeah. Are there any other questions? And I'll give you a second to do some typing if you are. But other than that, it is 11.06 and we can just about wrap it up. The name of the teleprompter tool someone wants to know is the Q prompter. 
and I will copy and paste that link into the chat. And am I going to talk about document cameras? I can. Um, so do you mainly want to know how to use them? Do you want to know the specific brands and models that you might want to use? And I guess, what do you more want to know about them? Mm -hmm. And let me, on the side here, I'm going to open up the list of document cameras that libraries have used over the years. They keep changing the models on me, so I'm trying to pull up the most recent one. And so most of the document cameras will be able to let you view one half of a large children's book, but usually won't let you view the entire children's book at one time. And the, the ones that do let you view the entire children's book in good clarity are a lot more expensive. But a good way that you can kind of get around that is by doing kind of two images side by side, and then you can edit them both together. And that way you can use a cheaper camera that still has good quality, but still get the effect that you're looking for. And you can also add animation and animation in this case is just kind of like, it'll make it look like a wipe and it'll slide across the screen. So it mimics the what it would look like when you're flipping the page of a book. It doesn't have to be over the top, but it just looks cooler that way. And if you want to know how to do animation in Canva, there is a learn section in the upper left hand corner. And there are a series of tutorials that will show you how to do the basics, including animation. And there's also about a million and one YouTube videos that will show you the basics of what you can do. The main thing with animation that I use in Canva is the text. So the text is in the effects in the upper corner here. And you can, you can change the visual of how that looks. And you can also start messing around with the way that appears in here. Mm -hmm. And then you can also, oh, it is 11.09. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. But, you know, it'll be easier if you watch the full tutorial on here. Basically, all it does is make the text swoop in from the side and it'll start giving it more of a, dan a dynamic look on here. And the document camera that I was looking for that is reasonably priced is this one. And I will put that into the chat. It's just an Amazon link. If you have a ridiculously high budget, the Epson is a good one, and it will do more document scanning and also be able to let you stream at the same time. And the other one that a library just used is let me find it here and make sure that I'm giving you the right model number. Nope. Don't tell me they discontinued it. Oh, that's the same one that I just gave you. So it is the one that I just put into the chat is the one I was thinking of. Cool. Right, and were there any other questions? Mm -hmm. I don't see any popping in. Let me see if I can get Krista back here. Krista, are you able to take the screen back? Yes.
All right. So I think we will wrap it up then for this morning. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. Um, we had a little weirdness with the audio. Amanda can't hear me, but that's okay. We had text chat and things were going okay. Um, as I said, we um, any of the links that she mentioned will be included when we do um, put up the recording as well. So um, the links to the video guide and, and other things that are in there, I'll make sure those are included as well. Um, on our um, Encompass Live webpage, this is our main page. If you Google Encompass Live, we're the only thing called that right now. Right here are our upcoming shows. Right underneath that is our archive shows. And this is where the recording will be at the top of this list here. Uh, should be uh, ready and processed uh, by the end of this this week, um, probably tomorrow. Um, most likely, I'll get it done by then. As long as go to webinar and YouTube, we chose we post our YouTube our recordings for our show onto our YouTube channel. It'll be here. A link to um, Amanda's slides. A link to everything else that you might need. Um, also, while we're here, I'll show you if this is the archives, you can see you can do a search on our full archives on any topic you want to see what we have on here. Um, you can search the whole one or the most recent 12 months. That is because this is the full show archives and um, going back to the beginning of Encompass Live. Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So there is over 10 years worth of recordings here. So just pay attention to when the date of the original broadcast was. Uh, some of our sessions shows will stand the test of the time. Some of them will become outdated, um, information no longer accurate, websites or resources or services no longer work, links might not work, whatever. Just pay attention to whenever the original broadcast date was, whenever you're looking through our archives. Um, but everyone who attended this morning and everyone who record registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. So you can go ahead and um, so you'll know when you can um, access it. Uh, we, I'll go back to our Encompass Live page. We also have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you do like to use Facebook, you give us a like over here. We put reminders about um, the shows, when they're ready to come out um, to start what our upcoming shows are, uh, when our recordings are available, anything going on about um, the show is on our Facebook page as well. Uh, we also use the NCOMP Live hashtag uh, for our other um, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, anywhere else online. So if you want to follow us using that, let me get to my page here. There we go. So I will, um, before we um, leave, I just want to give a reminder Yes. So um, our next week's show is um, our uh, One Book, One Nebraska for anyone in Nebraska or anyone who's interested in this in this one. You notice here it's at a different special time. Uh, we originally had the show for was scheduled for last week, but we um, decided to skip doing a show on our inauguration day and moved it to February 3rd. And to accommodate the author's schedule of this book, James Kimball is going to be in the afternoon at 1 p.m. Central Time. So from 1 to 2 p.m. Central Time instead of at 10 a.m. So special time for next week's Encompass Live about Prairie Forge, the extraordinary story of the Nebraska scrap metal drive of World War II. Very interesting story. Um, so if you're interested in hearing about that, um, make sure you join us next week on Wednesday afternoon. After that, we'll go back to our regularly scheduled 10 a.m. shows, unless something else happens. <laughs> um, so other than that, that will uh, wrap it up for today's show. One last thing I want to mention, um, here out of the Nebraska Library Commission, we also do a show, uh, one day online conference, conference, Big Talk from Small Libraries, it's the end of February, February 26th. We're getting the schedule and the speakers ready right now. Um, the speakers are listed here with all the titles of their sessions, if you want to see what's coming up. And I'll let you know that to this afternoon, I will be getting the schedule finalized. I've heard from the final speaker, confirmed everything's good to go. So on our schedule page, we have a full schedule posted by the end of the day today. So you will see exactly what is happening. Our lightning rounds are up there already, but we'll have the titles of all of our shows and when all of our sessions and when they're going to be. And you can go ahead and register for that right now. Registration is already open, even though we're still working on a schedule. Go ahead there, click on the link, and sign up to join us on February 26th for Big Talk from Small Libraries. Or register for any of our other shows in, coming up on Encompass Live. Other than that, thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. Hopefully, we'll see you on another episode of Encompass Live. And hopefully, you'll join us for Big Talk from Small Libraries. Bye-bye.